The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Feeling low. Feeling tense. These hate words are common sense. Smoke a lucky. To be your level best. Smoke a lucky. To be your level best. Your level best. That's just how you'll feel when you light up a Lucky, because Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense. Yes, friends, Lucky's fine tobacco puts you on the right level to feel and do your level best. It's important to know that fine tobacco can do this for you. And LSMFT, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Smooth, mild, thoroughly enjoyable tobacco. So next time you buy cigarettes, remember that Lucky's Fine Tobacco puts you on the lucky level where you feel and do your level best, where things seem right and are right because you feel right. Yes, smoke a Lucky to feel your level best. <laughs> The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once every year, Jack Benny decides to tempt fate by going out to Santa Anita for the races. Yesterday was that day. So let's go back and pick up Jack and Rochester in the car. Gee, Rochester, I can't wait to get to the racetrack. Me too, boss. Well, it's a good idea starting early. We miss all the heavy traffic. Uh-huh. You know, Rochester, it's such a beautiful day. Let's put the top down. The top is down. <laughs> then why is it so dark? We ain't out of the garage yet. <laughs> Oh, 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 well, let's hurry. Don't, uh, don't drive too fast, Rochester. I won't, boss. Yeah, da dee da dum da dee da dum da dum da dee da da dum Hey, Rochester, there's a house that looks just like mine. It is yours. We ain't out of the driveway yet. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes. Well, let's get going. <laughs> ah, this is the life. Top down, beautiful day, balmy weather, sunshine. It sure is swell. It sure is. You know, Rochester, sunshine is the... Uh-oh, I think it's going to rain. I don't think so, boss. Then why did it get so dark? The car slipped into reverse. We're back in the garage again. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake, Rochester, we'll never get to Santa Anita. Now, come on, we've got to pick up Miss Livingston. <laughs> Rochester, there's Miss Livingston's house. You better start putting on the brakes. The brakes wore out last week. No <laughs> brakes, and how do you stop the car? You know that chain I've got up here with the hook on the end of it? Yes. Well, I drop it through the floorboards and pray for an open manhole. <laughs> Well, now, that's the silliest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Congratulate me, boss. I hooked one. <laughs> good, good. Miss hmm, Livingston said she'd be waiting out in the front for me. Rochester, honk the horn. Yes, sir. <laughs> That, with that, with that horn, she must know it's me. Either you or the hit parade. See, what's keeping her? I'll go up to the door. See, I haven't seen Mary since she went to Palm Springs last week. Ah, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Sorry I kept you waiting. Oh, that's all right. But, Mary, it's such a beautiful day. Why are you wearing that heavy fur coat? Oh, darn it. I thought I was still in Palm Springs. 
Oh, was it cold in Palm Springs? Only the night. Well, how were the days? Rainy. Oh. <laughs> no, really? No, nah, just kidding, Jack. We had wonderful weather. And you know, I stayed at the racket club. Oh, yes, yes. Who all was there, Mary? Well, there was Robert Taylor, Frank Sinatra, Walter Pigeon, and Gregory Peck. Well, you must have had a lot of fun. No, it was dull. Dull? With Taylor, Sinatra, Pigeon, and Peck? Yeah, I can't understand it. Who else was there? Mrs. Taylor, Mrs. Sinatra, Mrs. Pigeon, and Mrs. Peck. <laughs> oh, oh, well, I can understand it, kid. <laughs> Well, come on, Mary. We'll be late for the races. Eh? Hello, Rochester. Hello, Miss Livingston. Let's get going. Start the car, Rochester. Yes, sir. The motor is flooded. It's got it's got too much gas. Shall I throw it over my shoulder and burp it? <laughs> Never mind the wisecracks. Try it again, Rochester. Yes, sir. It started. It started. Off we go into the wild blue yonder. <laughs> Now, Rochester, turn to the left and follow this road uh, clear to the track. Yes, sir. You know, Mary, there's a horse I've been watching all season, and I'm sure it's going to win today. Uh, which one? Audacious Man. Audacious Man is one of the greatest horses. <laughs> was, was that a blowout? It wasn't a whistler. <laughs> How do you like that? It's the right rear. How could that tire blow out? The tube in it is practically new. Practically new? Yes. Boss, that tube's been fixed eight times with ten vulcanizing, four band-aids, and a Dr. Scholl's fan. <laughs> Never mind. I just changed the tire. Okay. I don't know why it is, but everything has to happen to me. Just once I want to go to the races and... Hey, what happened to the hot rod? Oh, look. <laughs> Jack, it's Phil. Yeah, Mary, put down the jack and wave to him. How are you, Phil? Fine, Livy. What's up? Got a flat? Yes, Phil. Fortunately, my car was going slow. It would have been dangerous if it had been blown out while we were going 70 or 80 miles an hour. Oh, Dad, stop bragging. It's only us. <laughs> hmm. Where are you going, Phil? To Santa Anita? No, I'm going to Pasadena to visit Sammy, my drummer. He was in a little accident the other night. Sammy was in an accident? What happened? Well, the boys in the band were having a party, and when <laughs> Sammy left, he was hit by a car while crossing the street. Gee, was it his fault? Well, it might have been. He was crossing on his hands and knees. <laughs> Oh, fine. Phil, how many times have I told you and Sammy and Remley to behave yourselves? Well, it was only last Saturday that I gave Sammy a lecture. Well, he took it to heart. Yes, he joined Alcoholics Unanimous. <laughs> That's anonymous. Alcoholics Anonymous. No, it's unanimous. My whole band joined with him. <laughs> well, for once, you're right. Hey, I'd like to go to the races with you, but I gotta run along. Say, Phil, maybe you'd like me to uh, bet a little something for you. You know, there's a good horse called Audacious Man. I'm going to bet $5 on it. Well, in that case, I think I'll go to Santa Anita myself. Uh, Phil, I thought you said you couldn't go. I know, Livy, but if Jackson is going to bet five bucks on a horse, I want to see how many extra legs it's got. <laughs> oh, stop being so smart, Phil. So long, plunger. See you later, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Gee, gee, Phil sure drives a beautiful car. Alice must be nuts about him. 
Now, let's get at that tire. It's all fixed, boss. I changed it while you were talking to Mr. Harris. Good, good. Then let's get going. <laughs> See, I hope we won't miss any of the races. Well, so what if we miss the first couple? Jack, does the radio in your car work? You never know till you turn it on, Mary. Try it. Hmm? The snow is snowing, the wind is blowing, but I can weather the storm. What do I care how much it may storm? My lucky strikes will keep me warm. I can't remember a worse December. Just watch those icicles form. What do I care if icicles form? My lucky strikes will keep me warm. Off with my overcoat. Off with my vest. I'll smoke a lucky strike. And be my level best. Keep on puffing. Cause then there's nothing can harm me, so let it storm. What do I care how much it may storm? My lucky strikes will keep me warm. It sure is frightening, but I'm not afraid of the storm. What do I care how much it may soar? My lucky strikes will always keep me warm. a big crowd here at the track. Yeah, and I feel lucky today. I'm sure Audacious Man is going to win. Ladies and gentlemen, the fifth race was a photo finish. We'll have the results in one moment. Oh, gosh, Jack, we missed five races already. Well, I don't care. I'm only interested in the sixth one. Say, Mary, let's go out and get a hot dog. But, Jack, we're in the clubhouse. Let's have lunch here. Well. <laughs> Waiter. Yeah. <laughs> hmm, uh, we'd, uh... We'd like to get something to eat. Uh, what would you suggest? A bib. You look like the sloppy type. <laughs> Never mind that. Now, what, uh, what can we get in a hurry? Well, we have roast pork, corned beef, leg of lamb, sirloin tips, and bacon and eggs. Bacon and eggs sound good. Are the eggs fresh? Ooh, are they? <laughs> oh, well, I'll have that. Uh, Mary, uh, how, uh, how about you, Mary? Would you like bacon and eggs? Ooh, would I? <laughs> Mary, uh, just bring us our orders, waiter, uh, as quickly as you can. Uh, yes, sir, and I'll seat you at that table over there. That's number one. Table number one, thank you. Now, Mary, let's look over that list of entries for the next race. I want to see if... Hey, Bud. Bud. Huh? Come here a minute. <laughs> Me? Yeah, yeah. Excuse me a minute, Mary. Uh, what is it? You gonna eat here? <laughs> yeah. What table? Table one. Uh-uh. <laughs> what? Take number nine. Why, what's wrong with table one? Bad position, it's on the rail. Number nine is on the outside. You won't get boxed in. <laughs> well, look, uh, I'm very happy with well, table one. Well, think it over, bud. Number one is a card table. A card table.
card table? Yeah, yeah. If it carries too much weight, its legs will fold. <laughs> Gee, I never thought of that. Now, now, look at the breeding on table number nine. The breeding? The... It's by Bite's Eye Maple out of Grand Rapids. <laughs> Gosh, I didn't even think they knew each other. Get wise, bud. Think it over. Okay, okay. Thanks for the tip. Say, Mary. <laughs> Mary, have you, have you decided yet what horse you're going Ladies to... Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, the last race was a photo finish, but you won't know the results till tomorrow. That's strange. The picture turned out so good that we've decided to show it at your neighborhood theater. <laughs> hmm. Mary, have you figured out yet what horse you're going you're to... You're bacon and eggs already. I put them on table number one. Number one. Do you think I'm a sucker? Put it on number nine. Number nine? Yes, number nine. Okay, okay. You make me sick. Well, you're no health resort for me either. <laughs> now, come on, Mary. When we finish eating, we'll walk around. There are probably a lot of people around here we know. Uh, Benita, may I have your pencil? Here you are, Ronnie. I'm so glad you brought me to the races today. This is my first time, you know. Yes, yes, I know. Now, let's see. In this next race... And, Downey, did you notice the women? Most of them are wearing the oh, lovely no, things... Benita, please, please. I'm trying to pick a horse for the next race. But, Ronnie, you don't have to do all that figuring. Um, Why not just bet on the winner? Just, <laughs> just bet on the winner? Well, certainly. Isn't horse racing like wrestling? Don't they know ahead of time? <laughs> Uh, I'm afraid now, darling, you see, horse racing is a sport. Wrestling is just something they use to sell television sets. <laughs> uh, Benita, uh, would you like some coffee? I'm not going into the clubhouse with you carrying that Oscar under your arm. <laughs> but that's just it. We won't have to go to the restaurant for coffee. That's why I brought my Oscar. What? Well, you see, the head screws off. I made it into a thermos bottle. <laughs> Darling, you shouldn't have done that. It was quite an honor winning the Academy Award. By the way, what picture do you think will win this year? Oh, I don't know, Benita. There are so many good ones to choose from. There's Johnny Belinda, Treasure of Sierra Madre, Hamlet. What about Nightmare uh, Alley? Oh, Nightmare Alley is not a new picture. Oh, it is? No, they took the horn blows at midnight and ran it backwards. <laughs> I just can't decide on a horse for this next race. Well, Ronnie, why don't you bet on the horse that Mervyn Leroy told you about? Oh, yeah, yes, yes. He gave me early bird. And he knows horses. Yes, and look, it's, it's a long shot, too. Well, that settles it. That's the horse I'm going to bet on, early bird. Good for you. Oh, my, what a big crowd here today. Hmm. Seems as though everyone we... Oh, Ronnie. <laughs> Yes, what is it, Benita? Look to your left, six hours over. <laughs> Who is it? Jack Benny. What? <laughs> oh, dear, what will we do if he sees us? I don't know about you, Benita, but I'm going down to the starting gate and run around the track. <laughs> Shake hands with your jockey. <laughs> no, look, Benita, are you sure that's Benny? Let's have a look through those field glasses. Yes, yes, it's Jack, all right. You're looking through the wrong end. I know what I'm doing, darling. It puts him farther away from me. <laughs> Is Mary with him? I, I don't know. I just lost him in the crowd. Say, Jack, the next race will be on a few minutes. Aren't you going to make your bet? Yes, Mary. Five bucks on Audacious Man. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Mary. Hello, Dennis. 
Dennis, I didn't know you came to the races. Oh, sure. I just cleaned up on a horse in the fourth race, number 12. Number 12? What was the horse's name? Who cares about his name? It's the number that's important. That's my system. <laughs> you've, uh, you've got a system? Yeah. Well, Dennis, according to your system, how come you bet on number 12? Well, I took the jockey's weight, which is 105, and then I divided it by three because this is the third month of the year, and that makes 35. Uh-huh. And then I subtracted my age, which is 26, and 26 from 35 leaves nine. Uh-huh. And then I added three and bet on number 12. <laughs> Wait a minute, Dennis. I followed you all the way down to nine. Why did you add three? How else can you get to 12? <laughs> You shouldn't be here at all. You don't know anything about horses. Oh, don't be too sure about that, toots. <laughs> I know all about races and betting. I follow every racetrack in the country. Oh, you know all about betting, eh? Well, let me ask you something. What's a mutual? That's a network that didn't offer you a job. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I didn't think you'd know. You know? Oh, say, Mr. Benny, what? I meant to tell you, you were sensational on the Ford Theater Friday night. Simply wonderful. Oh, did you hear it, kid? No. <laughs> then who told you how good I was? You did. Oh, yes, yes. Come on, let's go over to the $5 window, Mary, and... Hey. Hey, Mary, look down there. Where? Down that aisle. Isn't that Ronnie and Benita Coleman? Oh, yes. Well, come on, let's go over and talk to them. Jack, they came to the track to, enjo to enjoy themselves, and I'll leave them alone. But, Mary, if they knew I was here and didn't stop to say hello, they'd be heartbroken. <laughs> now, come on, right down this aisle. Gee, Ronnie is handsome. I wonder how I'd look in a mustache. Well, they, they don't look good on everybody. Now, take my sister, babe. <laughs> Oh, be quiet. Your sister, babe. Hello, Benita. Hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Why, Ronnie, look who's here. Oh, hello, Ronnie. Aren't you surprised at meeting me here? Oh, am I? <laughs> you know, you know, Ronnie... There must be a hundred people here that I know, and yet I just had to come over and say hello to you. Well, thank you, Jack. Now, don't keep the other 99 waiting. <laughs> oh, I can see them later. Say, Ronnie, what horse are you going to bet on? And now, coming out on the track are the horses for the sixth race. Ronnie, have you picked your horse yet for the next race? Uh, yes, Jack. Come here a minute. Huh? Who are you betting on? Early bird. Uh-uh. <laughs> what? Early bird hasn't got him. Jack! Mary, I'm only going to tell him to bet on my horse. Look, Ronnie, forget about early bird and put your money on Audacious Man. He'll win by eight lengths. Ah, Jack, my mind is made up. I'm going to play early bird. But look, Ronnie, it's silly to come out here and just bet on any horse, especially after driving six hours to get to the track. Well, in my car, it's 40 minutes. <laughs> Gee. <laughs> Look, Ronnie, I've been studying these horses all season. I know what I'm talking about. Audacious man can't lose. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack, but I'm betting on early bird. Well, okay, Ronnie, it's your dough. But don't say I didn't tell you. The uh, horses are nearing the starting gate. Well, I'm going up the window to make my bet. Five dollars on the nose. Now, if you girls will excuse me, I'll go up and place my bet, too. Ronnie. Yes, Benita? Jack Benny is betting five dollars on Audacious Man. I know. Well, Ronnie, if Jack bets five dollars on a horse, he must know something. Well, yeah. no, I don't care. I'm going to stick with Early Bird. But, darling, think of it. Jack Benny betting five dollars. <laughs> yeah. Benita, maybe you're right. I, I'll take his advice and play Audacious Man. I'll be back. Benita, it's fun coming to the races once in a while, isn't it? Yes, I've enjoyed it tremendously. In fact, Ronnie and I are making a day of it. On the way home, we're stopping off for dinner at the Sportsman's Lodge. The Sportsman's Lodge? Jack is having dinner there, too. 
Oh, well, uh, please don't mention it in front of Ronnie. I've got my heart set on going. <laughs> the horses are in the starting gate. Well, I did it, Benita. I bet on Jack's horse. A hundred dollars on Audacious Man. Good. Now they're all lined up. They'll start as soon as they can quiet autocrat. He's a little fractious. He's dancing around a bit. Whoops, he backed out of the gate. Now he's dancing back into the gate. As you know, autocrat was trained by Arthur Murray. <laughs> Hey, this is exciting. And there they go. <laughs> Going into the first turn, it's Hitchwood in front, naturalist, second, straddlest, third, early bird is fourth, and audacious man. Come on, come on, audacious man. Ronnie, stop waving your ass. A coffee is coming out of its ear. <laughs> I wonder what happened to Jack. Coming around the far turn, it's still Hitchwood in front, naturalist, second, straddlest, third, audacious man is now fourth by half a length, and Hammett Squad. Come on, audacious man. Audacious man! Driving down the home stretch, it's straddle in front. Here I am, kids. Hitch with a second, audacious man is third, and here comes Triplicate and Early Bird. Come on, come on! And now, coming into the finish stretch, it's straddle, Triplicate and Hedgewood. And coming up fast on the outside, it's Early Bird. It's straddle and Early Bird. It's straddle and Early Bird. Now Early Bird is pounding hard. They cross the finish line, and it's Early Bird, the winner by half the length. Ronnie! Ronnie, we won! We won. What do you mean, we won? I bet on your horse, Early Bird. You what? Jack, do you mean that when you left here, you didn't bet on Audacious Man? No, you talked me out of it. <laughs> Ronnie. Ronnie, what are you so unhappy about? Jack Benny, I bet on the horse you gave me. You did? Ronnie, how could you be so silly? Ooh. <laughs> Benita, you shouldn't have done that. He's wearing glasses. <laughs> well, I don't blame her. Ladies and gentlemen, the American Heart Association is in need of $5 million to carry on their fight against the nation's leading cause of death. This money is needed to develop more local heart association, which will serve the community by unifying all local medical, nursing, and welfare services into one effective program. So please send your contributions to your local heart association or the American Heart Association, Box 500, New York City. Open your heart. Give to fight heart disease. Thank you. Jack, we'll be back in just a moment. But first... Smoke a lucky To be your level best Smoke a lucky To be your level best You see, Lucky's fine tobacco picks you up when you're low, calms you down when you're tense, puts you on the right level to feel and do your level best. Yes, fine tobacco can do that for you. And that's why it's so important that you select and smoke the cigarette of fine tobacco Lucky Strike. For as every smoker knows, L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. No wonder Luckies are the overwhelming choice of the tobacco experts. Men who can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. So when you choose your cigarette, be sure to make it Lucky Strike and get on the right level, the lucky level, where you feel your best and do your best. Yes, the next time you buy cigarettes, Ask for a carton of Lucky Strike. Feeling low. Feeling tense. Be paid for our common sense. Smoke a lucky. To be your level best. Smoke a lucky. To be your level best. Oh, Ronnie, what's the difference if you did lose? We had fun here at the races. I don't mind losing, Benita, but why did I let Benny talk me into betting on his horse? I should have my head examined. And now, coming across the line of finish, is audacious man! <laughs> Throw on your glue pot. Your mother wears blinkers. <laughs> This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.